Growing up, I played piano competitively. I did well in school, I got into the university I wanted, I showed horses, I learned a second language, I competed in dance competitions, I studied creative writing in college, and love crafting prose, and most importantly, I left my day job to paint full time, and have been doing it ever since. This video isn't about me tooting my own horn. It's about me sharing the things that I think set me up to learn and practice effectively and become good at the things that I have wanted to be good at throughout my life. I wanna share these things with you so that you can apply those same lessons to your painting practice so that you can make quality work that you love. So here are the things that have made me a good learner and have thus let me excel in those activities. The first thing that I have written down here is truly loving it no matter what activity I'm referring to. I didn't force myself to try and get great at something that I didn't have a fire burning in me for. I've set music and writing and language aside for huge stretches of time in favor of what I was fascinated by at that moment. I was at my most fluent in Spanish when I was in school, surrounded by Spanish speakers, and at a time when I would play online games with a gaggle of friends from Latin America. I practiced the piano most when all of my friends seemed to be in my high school band. And when my circumstances changed, I didn't shut the doors on those hobbies forever. I simply let myself flow into whatever the next passion would be. So this isn't to say that you should throw away your hobbies as soon as they get tough or become subject to your own whimsy, but rather, I know that I'm gonna have the most momentum in terms of getting really great at something when I am just in the throes of loving it, when I am surrounded by people and inspiration that reminds me of that thing. So to help set myself up for this, I surround myself with people who love the things that I love, just as I am most likely to read and write around other writers, I am most likely to paint around other artists. So one thing I prioritize this year is to get out of my own studio and spend time with painters who inspire me, who make me laugh, who make me want to create incredible things. I think giving yourself permission to fall in love with something is one of the most powerful pieces of becoming truly great at it. I have this memory this isn't even something I put in my notes for this video, but just something that's occurring to me as I'm recording this right now. It's the story of a woman who fell romantically in love with a bow and arrow. Now, I might be completely misremembering this. It could be a crossbow, but the depth of that passion led her to become absolutely world-class at this and to excel at it in a way that nobody could have even anticipated. And I think in a way that's what we need to be really great at something. We can't just show up to it every day like it's work. We have to fall in love with it because that is what's gonna carry us through when we're tired, when we're burnt out, when we're out of ideas. And it's not that that love is going to be consistent every single day or without its hiccups but it is the thing that can sustain us in the long run. And that's what we really need to become great at something. We need to show up to it over and over in the long run. But once that passion is there, that is when the real work begins. And that's probably what you want to know more about for this video. So when I danced back in college, Everyone was expected to progress at the rate of about one skill level per year. In your first year, you competed in the newcomer category, then bronze the next year, then silver, then gold, and everyone was comfortable with that. They took the time to just be at the level they were at, a level they were expected to be at, and they improved just the same rate that everyone else improved. And I swear this is relevant to, to painting. So one year, a new girl showed up and started dancing with us. And within months, she knew who all the top professionals in the world were. She had studied their videos. She had dissected their routines, broke them down. And without getting permission from anyone, she just started dancing like the pros. Within a year, she went from newcomer to bronze to silver to gold, and then all the way into the open levels beyond gold. And I had never seen anyone do that. I don't think it even occurred to anyone that you could do that. At the time, there I was, diligently working on the bronze syllabus, and she passed me. She passed everybody. But it showed me something essential about going after something you love. You don't have to have done this since you were a kid. You don't need to have someone else's timeline in mind to get great. 
You can become great even as an adult, as a woman, as a person who has already had a career. And in case it's ambiguous, I am not talking about just dance here, I am talking about painting. You can become incredible even if you start painting or taking it seriously in retirement. You can become incredible as a woman, as a mother. You can become incredible with this in a remarkably short amount of time if you give yourself permission to. But to do that, you need to know exactly what your goal is and what it looks like. It wasn't enough to try and beat out the other dancers who were dancing at the bronze level for this person. To be really great, you had to watch the pros and give yourself permission to try and be like the pros, not just better than the people who were dancing around you. So if you wanna become great at painting, you need to spend time looking at and studying paintings that are absolutely masterful to you. that line right up with the kind of painting you want to make. You have to imagine what it's like to step into that artist's shoes and make those marks. Imagine what it's like to have their level of discernment when judging where and how you need to put brush to canvas. Be mindful of your drawing and give yourself permission to get the likeness exactly right instead of just letting it be good enough. This is what I do, or at least what I try to do when I paint. And that's exactly what you're seeing me do in this video. I surround myself with people who inspire me, I let that part of me that is so excited to show off what I can do light up. And I play a game with myself to hold an image from my favorite painters in my head and ask myself, what would those painters do if they were standing where I am right now in front of this model? But that's just how I show up to one individual painting. The reality is, is that this is a long-term journey. This requires putting in really intentional work. It requires building very specific skills and showing up to those skill building kinds of exercises over and over again. So from there, once I'm really clear on how I wanna be painting, I need to break down exactly what's stopping me from painting like that painter that I'm looking up to. Is it that my drawing isn't quite accurate enough? Am I not taking enough time to establish correct proportions? Am I blind to certain perspective errors? Am I creating too much contrast in my value range? Are my colors too saturated? Am I overworking my mark making? You see, once I know where my weaknesses are, precisely in comparison to my goal, I can tackle them one by one. I do this in painting, I did this with music, I do this with dancing. In dance, it's simple. I watch back my own videos of me dancing, which I hate to do, but I do it anyway. And I compare the figures and movements that I'm dancing to the same movements when danced by my favorite pros. It can take time to translate how different bodies can make the same movements look different person to person. But once I understand that nuance, I can simply go through my choreography measure by measure. Does the leg need to brush through here? Does the core need to be more engaged? Does the line need to be more extended? If I can go through the whole routine, moment by moment, catching every issue I see that stands between the way I'm dancing now and the way I want to be dancing, eventually the whole routine is going to be strong. And the same is true in painting. If I can tackle each issue from blocking to drawing to value relationships to color mixing to mark making, eventually entire pieces are going to come together exactly as I intend for them to. And it's not magic. It's simply having a process that I'm committed to in the long term. And then giving myself exercises that I can trust will help me to improve each individual area of weakness until they aren't weak anymore. That's exactly how I help my students and that's exactly how I could help you too. So if you want help achieving professional quality in your portraiture, I do offer mentorships designed to help you reach your painting goals. For more information on those, you can check out the links in the description to find out more and apply to see if we are a fit to work together. And until next time, happy painting.